Hey everybody and welcome back to another maddening video. It's not a maddening video really, I just call it a maddening video because it's maddening, but it's not. Um, what I have for you guys is a little bit crooked. What I have for you guys today is the Salaman Great Build. I guess you can call it a more budget build uh, rather than a best build um, for those of you guys that uh, can't afford all the goodies. But I mean, like, there's, you know, there's still like some investment in this deck. I mean, just three structure decks and then a couple of lucky pulls, and <laughs> you're you're good to go. Anyways, uh, um, Salaman Greats. So let's jump right into it. Um, just to kind of let you guys know in advance, I don't really have a side deck for this. Uh, for this side deck is usually the same kind of ordeal. Your Pranker Tops, your Ash Blossoms, your your Goose and Match. There can only be one type ordeal. So feel free to play with the extra, uh, the not the extra deck, the uh, the side deck. But this is just my main deck. Um, in my personal opinion, this deck really, really, well, at least it works for me. So I'm, you know, I hope it works for you guys the same way it does for me. Anyways, let's jump right into it. We have our three gazelles, your three spinnies. Um, it's pretty standard in, in the deck. Spinny spits itself out from the grave. Gazelle, foolish burials or extra foolish. It's just a burial for almost any Salomon Great uh card from uh from the deck into the beyond um your three foxies you know it's like a pot of duality without the restriction of not being able to special summon on top of that you can get rid of problematic face up cards on the field with this card by being able to special summon it from the grave so i mean like it's just a lot of plus in this card guys run you it's a three of it's got to be a three of right so uh, there's no harm in, in seeing it sooner rather than later Two Jack Jaguars. Um, a lot of people are like, run one. I I don't know. I've personally always just ran two. I like running two Jack Jaguars rather than one. But now with the whole DD Crow and banishing cards in the graveyard is becoming a more prominent thing. Uh, pe people are actually beginning to run two. So I I like to I like to consider consider myself to be ahead of the game. Unless other people have been playing two uh, long before I have. Then kudos to them. I don't want to take their uh, their spotlight. Uh, one Falco, you know, Falco is kind of better off as a one of, the, it's not a lot more to say. This card basically helps you procure your spells and traps that's in the graveyard. There are Salomon great cards, obviously, of course, otherwise this card would be tilted and it'd be played in every deck. Um, um, and it, uh, it's a great way to kind of help Sunlight Wolf, uh, in terms of, uh, of getting some goodies that you have sitting in the grave. Um, so this, okay, this is the, the thing that makes it a little bit more unique. I run one Beat Bison. So the thing that Salomon Great's main deck wise, they don't have is muscle, but they do have like a lot of control type ordeal. Beat Bison, it, it helps me with the control and it's also a muscle. You can't see it clearly because of these crappy sleeves, but it has 2,800 attack. It spits itself out easily. All you need is three Salomon Greats in the grave, uh, in the graveyard and he special summons himself. He also shuffles all of your fire link monsters from the grave into the uh into the extra deck and then it like shuts off all monster effects on your opponent's side of the field for the turn so i mean it is a great way to kind of bait out any negation or problematic cards i don't know why people don't really run this this card in, like insanely works for me and it's also a great uh kind of falco target when i'm trying to summon him from the grave i can just spin him back into my hand and special summon him uh again his summoning clause is not a uh, once per turn or at least i don't think so you, know, you can only use each fetch salmon great beat bison once per turn. Uh, you know, it doesn't really say. Uh, so that's just the summoning condition to be able to special summon. And so it's just out, bounce, out again. And so it's a great link climbing mechanic. So, I mean, I can look into into the ruling again uh, in terms of his uh, summoning conditions from the hand. But I don't think, I don't think that, uh, I don't think there's any real restrictions uh, on it. <clears throat> um, two lady debugs. In my personal opinion, I don't see like the all grand hype of this card for this deck. Um, th this card, if anything, kind of creates a slower, like I guess you could say slower hand. Yeah, it searches your gazelle, your spinning, and adds it to your hand. But I mean, like, <clears throat> th I, there's a better direction for me personally to go, and, th and that's with two buffaloes. Here's the thing I'd rather drop a Salomon Great monster from my hand into the grave to draw two cards. Then rather than to search one and then search another, because you're gonna link her away for the the bailings. So <clears throat> it's a matter of preference. I still do play two of her, 
because uh, sometimes it, it is convenient to get that extra search. Um, it just really depends on how you're kind of playing the deck out, really. So, but uh, I'd rather play the Buffalo any day. I mean, it's it's a draw two, and it's a plus one, basically, really. Or, I don't know, depends how you want to look at it. In my opinion, it's a, it's a plus one. Um, it gets me the bailings, and, you know, it gets me draw two. And it gets me a Solomon great into the grave, so it, it all works out. Um... One, uh, Crusadia Reclusia, because it's basically the deck's Pranker Tops that can come back over and over and over and over and over again because of Sunlight Wolf. Um, much like how people kind of abuse it for the Ash Blossom, I abuse it for uh, for the Reclusia. Um, two, Effect Veilers. It's an option. It's not like it's like the end of the world. You can use Ghost Ogre. Like I said, you can use any hand trap uh, if you want. This is essentially what I've already shown you is essentially the key thing or like the key uh, build for me personally. So this could be anything else in the world for you. And, and it also includes uh, the rest of the stuff that I'm uh, that I'm about to show you as well. One field spell because you don't want to see this in your hand at all. You much rather see any of your other thirty-nine cards or more, depending on how many how many uh, cards you're playing in your deck. Um, this is the card that is easily searched out at the summon of your bailings. It, it's so bad if you draw this card and you you're like, well, I don't have anything to do with bailings, so. <laughs> Uh, it's a great one of, you don't really want to play no more than one. Something you might consider too in the event that you might need it later in the, in the game and they somehow get rid of it and you have no way of being able to recycle it or whatever the case may be. So I, this deck falls pretty bad to banishing. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, three Salman Great Circle. It's basically the road of the deck. Um, enough said about that. The thing, the thing about this card, though, is you always want to play it during the draw phase. It be the best way to kind of play about it. It protects you from the Joel Lockbird situation. Um, threes, uh, Will of the Salaman Great. It's basically a Monster Reborn and a Soul Charge for the deck. Um, I run three because why not? Uh, <laughs> basically. No, I run three because you kind of want to see it soon. It helps you kind of continue building a board. Um, and at the same time, you, you don't, you don't want to kind of just like not have this as an option per se, because I mean, the deck already recurs itself like in, like a madman. But if, if, if they just keep negating it, negating it, negating it, they, they can't always hit every, every possible way of monster reborning your, your, your deck per se. Two, Foolish Burial of Goods. I use Foolish Burial of Goods to basically help, uh, Gazelle out in terms of getting some extra cards <laughs> into the deck. Oh, this is an extra foolish burial of goods. Damn it. I've, you know, bad pun. Yeah. Anyways, so um, I'd use this to get basically get Rage or Roar uh, into the grave and use Gazelle's effect to kind of send something else uh, to the grave. And it helps, uh, it, help ex it helps extend plays per se. Um, the last of my more than one of is uh, Burial of a Different Dimension. Like I said, this deck falls horribly to uh banishing uh banishing effects like called by the grave my spinning called by the grave my spinning again and call oh you can just get rid of all my spinning oh my falco okay well i have nothing left to go <laughs> or if i need an extra bailings and all my bailings are gone because i'm trying to protect my monsters yeah it's great it's great just everything that can possibly recur itself it's banished and i have absolutely no way of being able to get it back um, and unless you guys have a way of getting it back other than this way, feel free to share, comment below, whatever the case may be. But this is basically the direction I chose to go. To be quite honest, this, this, this card has not really produced that much of a problem. The only time it produces a problem is if I draw a dead hand. But of course, dead hand exists in every deck, no matter how hard you try to not create a dead hand. Now for like the bajillion one ofs. Fusion of Fire, most uh, deck, or at least most way that players play Salaman Greats, this is practically the win condition. Um, I play it very differently. This is not my win condition. This is kind of like, at least in my opinion, this is just like a nice option to have. Um, I usually play a more controlled manner uh, in the deck. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just that. It's just play it more controlled rather than uh, fusioning, uh, fusion summoning stuff out. Reasoning, you can never go wrong with reasoning. Yes, I, ideally, they're just going to call three all the freaking time. And, and so nine times out of ten, you'll just end up leaving it in the grave. 
but I mean, like, like I said, you can never go wrong with reasoning because Solomon Greats, it, it, it feeds off the graveyard. So even if you send a bunch of the spells and traps to the grave before you before they hit that spinny or gazelle, it's 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 one of those things where it just works out. It just completely works out. The camera turned a little bit, but that's okay. It didn't turn so much, so there's no need to kind of finger with it. The next foolish burial, uh, one time passcode. Sure, I'm just gonna show all of my token generators. So foolish burial, can, again, just like uh, extra foolish burial or whatever the other foolish burial of goods um, helps gazelle out. Uh, one time passcode. It is the uh, so the token. It is a cyber monster, so it's a freebie in terms of getting bailings, and it's all it's also extra resource because why not scapegoat? Because scapegoat that, <laughs> that's that's all I realistically need to say about that. Um, one threatening roar, one rage threatening roar can recycle itself, but again, it, the deck kind of falls to banishing. So if you use its own effect to kind of banish itself, or not banish itself, if you use its own effect to get it out, you're gonna end up losing it for sure. Unless you have a way of bouncing it to your hand or bouncing it into the deck, right? So I, I, I would assume Heatleo. I don't know if Heatleo can target your own cards. But the point is, um, this card's great. And I'd rather get it reset by either getting it back to my hand using Sunlight or using Falco to reset it every single time. Same thing with Rage. So it's it, this is usually my control uh kind of program and it's interesting how i run one of but i feel like i have a million of these because of the recurrence that this deck has right <clears throat> and uh always with the spicy tech blind obliteration i always like adding some extra spice to any decks that i essentially play and <laughs> blind obliteration see now is mo seen as how most of the time you're gonna have link monsters out rather than uh exceeds or even uh monsters with regular levels uh, you can never really go wrong with this deck and even if you have monsters with regular levels out in the field you have bail links in the grave so the way blind obliteration works is you roll a die two times and then whatever your total is any monster whose rank or level is equal to that or is less gets blown up they're, they're gone they're dead they're bye bye basically that's the prop that's the thing so this is it's a fun way of kind of mirror forcing or or torrential or regecking the board and, and witnessing the fact that your monsters could have been destroyed but because they don't have levels they don't get destroyed so uh this card i this card i originally got it for world Chalice because world Chalice is the same ordeal so um i yeah that's pretty much it for the main deck onto the extra deck um two bailings um i never saw the need for three especially with the amount of times i can shuffle back my extra deck monsters with beat bison or even jack jaguar so or even Falco. Falco can also uh, bounce these back from the field. <clears throat> so it's your it's your field spell searcher. I mean, it's, it's as far as that goes. Uh, the main key player from the extra deck uh, in this deck is Sunlight Wolf. It's your recurrence. It's your it's your stacking ammo because you know you target one fire monster in your grave and you get it back to your hand. Kind of ordeal. Uh, it, it's it's basically like one of it's like the the bread and butter of the deck. You're heat leo boy oh boy if you're playing that back row heavy deck and it's just not working out for you you can get heat leo out at least two to three times you're going to be getting rid of your problems because his link summon effect is not a once per turn it's completely ridiculous how it works but uh but that's that for the uh well it's not that that for the link monsters but that's that for the solomon great link monsters uh we're gonna revisit links in a bit i've got a very strange way of organizing my deck really <laughs> time thief redoer he's a one of he's great um could potentially get you uh a draw he could potentially uh bounce an opponent's monster or whatever the case may be uh, um i think the best thing about this card is it steals from your opponent's deck during every standby phase known to man so being able to get rid of a problem a probable problematic card before it's even seen in your opponent's hand I, I i think that's a plus uh two stallios it's a part of the deck it, you need it it special summons uh salomon great from the deck and it doesn't even negate the effects of that salomon great monster so it's a, it's a bigger plus in that sense so <clears throat> why not you know it's uh the only downside is or the only restriction that he's got is you can only activate fire monsters effects uh, for the rest of the turn after you use his effect. So, but ideally, you'd want to use all the other monsters effects so they're not fire before you use Stalio. The one Chimera, um, 
like I said, it's, it's one of the win conditions. It gains muscle, it, it wins battles, things like that. Uh, not a lot to say. And, um, and of course, like I said, the Spice N is also one of the reasons why I have Scapegoat. Uh, one of her, Hida, I, can, I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name. One Link Spider, one Proxy, and then literally any of the Boral uh, monsters or Boral Link monsters. I only have a Boral Guard. I don't have any other Boral monsters. That's why Boral Guard is in the game. But I mean, like, Boral Guard has a pretty good protection. Um, and he's actually pretty decent in terms of his effect. Um, basically, he can't be destroyed. By card effects, at least. Um, he shifts a monster to defense. And I get to special summon any monster who was destroyed uh, that was destroyed that turn. Of course, in the, the effects are negated. But, I mean, I can totally exploit that to my, uh, to my own personal advantage. So, uh, that's pretty much it in terms of my extra deck. And then, uh, if you guys want to see it, my four tokens. Um, but, yeah. So, like, none of this ugly hippo token that i have lying around here somewhere i don't know oh there they are look at that look, that's ugly anyways that's it for uh, that's it that's all that i have for you guys um if you have any uh comments questions concerns feel free to comment below and i will take a good gander at them and uh respond hopefully in a timely fashion i'm usually pretty good with responses um in addition to, if you like today's video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you don't, do what you gotta do. I'll, I'll be sad, but I won't die. I will continue providing content just because you guys are all so amazing. For those who support the channel, continue supporting the channel. And for those of you guys who are new and wish to support the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button or even checking out the Twitch link in the description below. Anyways, that's all that I have for you guys. And I hope you guys have a fan-freaking-tastic day.